Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 43 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam. Today we're going to focus on currency and exchange rates, and we're also going to focus on recipes. So we're going to look at both of those topics. I'll give you some questions through the video in terms of questions for you to try as well. So remember to press pause and try those questions. So let's get started. Okay, now let's have a look at currency or exchange rates, because sometimes you might encounter currency or exchange rate questions in your exam. So we've got Nicola went to Italy. She changed £900 into euros. The exchange rate is £1 is €1.40. Change £900 into euros. So for each pound, she gets €1.40. So we just need to do 900 lots of €1.40. €1,260, and that's it. So if we want to change £900 into euros, we just need to multiply by the number in the exchange rate, that 1.4, and that's it. Okay, now we're told a watch costs 105 euros. How much is this in pounds? So now we're working backwards. So we just need to see how many lots of 1 euro 40 would go into 105 euros. So we're just going to now divide by the number in the 105 divided by 1.4 or 1.40 would be equal to 75 pound. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, Vicky buys an ice cream for 6 euros in 88 cents in Berlin. And the exchange rate is 1 pound is equal to 1 euro 60. Find the cost of ice cream in pounds. Okay, feel free to press pause and to work this question out yourself. So we know the cost of ice cream in euros, six euros in 88 cents, and we want to find the cost in pounds. So we know that for every time we've got one euro 60, that's one pound. So if we see how many lots of one euro 60 go into six euros in 88 cents, that'll be how much the ice cream costs in pounds. So let's take our 6.88, our six euros in 88 cents, and let's divide that by one euro 60, the number in the exchange rate, 1.6 or 1.60. I'm not going to write the zero because I don't need to, but you could write 1.60 if you wanted to. And let's work that out and see what we get equal to 4.3, so 4.3. So the price of the ice cream would be £4.30. And that's it. So the price of the ice cream is £4.30. So if we know how much it is in euros and we know the exchange rate, we can just divide by the number in the exchange rate and find out what the price would be in pounds. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, Kevin is going on holiday to New York and he wants to change some money into US dollars. So he's got some money and he wants to change it into US dollars. And he visits the bank and the bank only stocks $10 notes or $10 bills, I think they would call them in America, but we're going to call them $10 notes. So there's notes and they're all $10 each. So that's what the bank stocks. And Kevin wants to change up to £300 into US dollars. So he's got up to £300 that he wants to change into dollars. And he wants as many $10 notes as possible. So he's going to go into the bank and change as much of his money as he can into dollars. And the exchange rate is one pound is equal to $1.22. And the question says, how many $10 notes should he get? Okay, feel free to press pause and to work this question out yourself. Okay, so to start off with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider if the bank had coins as well as notes and they could change any amount into US dollars, let's see how much money Kevin could get. So if he had £300 to begin with, and every pound is equal to $1.22, so we can multiply by 1.22 to see how much that's worth in US dollars. So if we take his £300 and we multiply that by 1.22, that's equal to, and that's equal to $366. So if Kevin could go into the bank and he could change all his money into US dollars, that's how much the bank would have to give him, $366. But the question says the bank only stocks $10 notes or $10 bills. So that means it has to be a multiple of 10. He can't get $366 because they have no way of giving him the $6 because they don't have anything lower than a $10 note. So that means that the maximum amount of money that he could get would be equal to $360. That's how much money he could get, $360, because they they could give him 36 ten dollar notes and the question is how many ten dollar notes should he get well if he changes as much money as possible that's how much he could get so how many notes should he get he should get 36 of them because 36 ten dollar notes or ten dollar bills would be 360 dollars and that's it so if you got 36 well done Okay, so we've had a look at currency and exchange rates. Now let's have a look at recipes. Now sometimes what we're given in recipe questions is we're given a list of ingredients. So for instance here, this is some seafood rice and it serves six people. And we've got four ingredients. We've got rice. So for six people, they, they need 420 grams of rice. We would need 600 grams of seafood mix. We'd need 1.5 liters of fish stock and we'd need 300 grams of peas. And they're the ingredients that we need for seafood rice to serve six people. But sometimes we're given questions such as this one where Jessica doesn't want to serve six people she wants to serve three people and we're asked how much of each ingredient should she use okay so feel free to press pause and try this question now yourself well if we think about it if this serves six people if jessica wants to serve three people we could just half these ingredients because they obviously three people is half of six people to get from six people to three people we just half that so we just need to half the ingredients so in terms of the rice if we divide it by two divide by two that'd be equal to 210 grams so jessica would need 210 grams of rice in terms of the seafood mix, if we divide by 2, 600 divided by 2 is equal to 300 grams of seafood mix. 
In terms of the fish stock, we would need to divide by two. So we're going to need to divide 1.5 liters by two. Now in terms of 1.5 liters, that's 1,500 milliliters. And if we divide that by two, half of this would be equal to 750 milliliters. And I've just halved that to get 750 milliliters. So she would need 750 milliliters of fish stock. And finally, in terms of the peas, we divide 300 grams by two. We're going to half it, so that'll be equal to 150 grams of peas. So we were asked how much of each ingredient should she use. She should use 210 grams of rice, 300 grams of seafood mix, 750 milliliters of fish stock, and 150 grams of peas, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got the same list of ingredients, and it still serves six people, but Jessica this time wants to serve 18 people, so she's got a lot of people coming over, and she wants to serve them all seafood rice, and the question says how much of each ingredient should she use? Okay, feel free to press pause now to work out this question yourself. Now to get from 6 people to 18 people, we would multiply by 3. We'd multiply by 3 because we'd need 3 times as much. So that means we're going to need to multiply each of the ingredients by 3. So if we multiply each of these quantities by 3, that'll be how much of each ingredient Jessica would need to serve 18 people because 6, 12, 18. So let's multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3, and multiply by 3. So in terms of the peas, that'll be 900 grams. In terms of the seafood stock, where 1.5 plus 1.5 is equal to 3, plus another 1.5 would be equal to 4.5 litres. In terms of the seafood mix, 600 grams multiplied by 3, where 6 times 3 is equal to 18, adding on the zeros would be 1,800 grams. But we could change this into kilograms, that would be 1.8 kilograms by dividing by 1,000, so 1.8 kilograms of seafood mix and finally in terms of the rice 420 multiplied by 3 so you would need 1260 grams of rice or dividing that by 1000 1.26 kilograms and that's it so that's how much of each ingredient Jessica would need for 18 people and we find that by just multiplying by 3 okay next Okay, this time we've got the same list of ingredients again, but this time she wants to serve two people so perhaps her and just a friend Okay, feel free to press pause and to work this question out yourself and she wants to serve two people. So how do we get from six people to two people? Well, we would divide by three. We would divide by three. And then if we divide each of the quantities by three, that'll be how much of each ingredient you would need. So 140 grams of rice. So it's going to be 200 grams of seafood mix. So she needs 0.5 litres or 500 milliliters of fish stock. She would need 100 grams of peas. And that's it. So to find how much of each ingredient Jessica needs for two people, we just need to divide all the quantities by three. Okay, next. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So next question says, Jessica wants to serve one person. How much of each ingredient should she use? And this is actually quite important because the questions I've given you so far have been quite nice because three people, you could just half it. For 18 people, we just times by three. For two people, we just divide it by three. Um, if we wanted, for instance, five people or seven people or 19 people, we might be quite, it might be quite handy to actually find how much you need for one person and then times by the number of people that you want. So being able to find one person is quite useful. Okay, feel free to press pause and to work this out yourself. Now, if this is out of six people, to find how much you need for one person, you just need to divide by six. You just need a sixth of each of these. So divide by six, divide by six, divide by six, and divide by six. That's 70 grams of rice to 100 grams of seafood mix. So that's 250 milliliters. So that's 50 grams of peas. So that's how much you would need for one person. Now, that's going to be quite handy because in our next question, we're asked, how much does she need for each ingredient to serve five people? Okay, feel free to press pause and to work this question out yourself. Well, if we know how much she needs for one person, that would be quite useful because now we can just multiply each of these numbers by five. So for five people, you just need to multiply each of these by five. So multiply by five, multiply by five, multiply by five, and multiply by five. So that'll be 350 grams of rice, be 500 grams of seafood mix. So that's 1,250 milliliters. So 1,250 milliliters of fish stock. Or we could write it as 1.25 liters, depending on how you want to write that. 250 grams. And that's it. So to find how much you'd need for five people, what we've done is we've divided each of these quantities by six. We've divided by six, divided by six, divided by six, and divided by six to find out how much she needs for one person because these ingredients serve six people. So if we divide them all by six, we'll see how much she needs for one person. And then we can just times by the number of people we want, which in this case is five. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So next question, we've got a list of ingredients and it serves 10 people. So we've got cod, haddock, milk, butter, flour, and potatoes. I would told that Jack's got 300 grams of cod and he's got plenty of the other ingredients. And how much should he use of the other ingredients? So feel free to press pause now and work out how much of the other ingredients. So we know he, well, he's going to use 300 grams of cod. So he's going to use 300 grams of cod. But how much of the other ingredients should he use? So feel free to press pause now and work that out. 
Okay, so if we wanted to work out how much of the other ingredients Jack needs to use, what we could do is we could look at the COD to begin with. So in terms of the COD, it, the original recipe had 500 grams, but his recipe is only using 300 grams. So if we read that as a fraction, well, originally it was 500 grams, and he's now using 300 grams. And if we cancel that down, dividing both of those by 100 gives us three-fifths. So that means you, he's using three-fifths of the amount of COD, because if we divide by 5 and times by 3, if we divide it by 5, we get that's equal to 100, and then multiply by 3, that's equal to 300. So he needs to use three fifths of each of the other ingredients as well. So he needs to, because he's work using three fifths of the amount of cod, he needs to use three fifths of the, all the other ingredients as well. So we're going to divide them all by five to find one fifth, and then we're going to multiply them all by three to find three fifths. So let's divide by five to begin with. So let's divide by five. So dividing each of these by five gives us 100 grams. It gives us 80 grams. It gives us 120 milliliters. It gives us 24 grams of butter. It gives us eight grams of flour, and it gives us 200 grams of potatoes. I've changed that. I've changed that one kilogram into a thousand grams there, and I've divided by five to get 200 grams. Now that's found one fifth. We want to find three fifths of each of these, so we're going to multiply by three and multiply by three, and so on. So multiplying by three, well, 100 times three is 300 grams of cod. 80 grams times three would be equal to 240 grams of haddock. 120 milliliters times by three would be 360 milliliters of milk. 24 grams of butter multiplied by three would be equal to 72 grams of butter. Eight grams of flour times three would be 24 grams of flour. And finally, 200 grams of potatoes multiplied by three would be equal to 600 grams of potatoes. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. So in this question, what we done was we just found out that um, he's using three fifths of the amount of cod, just writing it as a fraction and canceling it down. And then we just worked out three fifths of each of the other ingredients. And that gives us the ingredients that we need to use. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. And that's it. So in today's video, we've looked at currency and exchange rates. We've looked at how to deal with questions that involve those currency and exchange rates and how to perhaps if you're given an exchange rate, for instance, one pound is equal to one dollar seventeen cents how to change from pounds into dollars and back into pounds and so on and we've also looked at how to answer some questions involving those and also we looked at recipes so for instance if you were given a list of ingredients and you were told these ingredients serve four people how to find the amount of each ingredient needed to serve eight people and twelve people and two people and six people and one person and five people and things like that okay and we've also looked at some slightly more tricky questions where we're told how much of a particular ingredient we've got and how many is the maximum number of people we can serve and things like that. So I really hope you found this video useful. These questions, I really like them, and I, I like to think that sort of whenever it comes to these recipes and exchange rate questions, that the more practice you do with them, the better you'll be at them. So in the description below, there's a link to the practice questions of both of them, so give those a shot, and I really think the more practice you do with these topics, the better. And also, it's one of those topics there where the more practice you do, the better, as I said a few times. But with the five a days, they'll come up in the five a days. So if you're doing the numeracy, the foundation, the foundation plus five a days, they'll be really useful for you in terms of preparing for these topics as well. So keep up the hard work. Tomorrow, there'll be 42 days to go to GCC Mavs exam. So remember to tune into YouTube at three o'clock. That's whenever the videos will come out. And remember, if you find these videos useful, like them and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.